Good afternoon, everyone. Steve Georgia here from Allendale's Trading Floor. It is March 9th, and I'm giving you guys your weekly wrap-up. Uh, we did have USDA come out this morning with their supply and demand report. They left carryout unchanged for corn, unchanged for beans. Uh, 801 million uh, left over here for corn. We're talking uh, 275 left in the beans. That's right where we were at uh, last uh, last month. So those numbers should have been looked at a little bit negative. Uh, but uh, during this session, we had, or actually about five, ten minutes after the session opened, uh, we started hearing rumors of China coming in and buying corn. I mean, if, if you guys had seen the open this morning, we were lower right off the bat, and then we took off to the upside. Corn ended up finishing about nine and a half higher today. Uh, we had beans at one point go up about 18 cents. They finished only three quarters of a cent higher today, though. So they pulled on back right near the close. And then wheat up about eight and three quarter cents. So with that said, as I mentioned, China, these rumors of China coming in and buying corn. Uh, I've seen, uh, you know, from the floor anywhere from one to two cargoes up to the guys talking 600,000 to 3 million metric tons. Uh, the truth is, is that none of it is confirmed. So it is just rumors right now. Is this a buy the rumor, sell the fact type idea? I don't know. Let's look at this thing on a weekly basis. What has corn done? Corn is down 10 cents for the week. So even though we're up 9.5 and, and we kind of shook off more of a bearish report, we are still down for the week. We're down about 10 cents. We got the beans up only 3 and 3 quarter cents for the week. Seems a lot stronger than that once we saw how, we, how today started and how beans kind of caught fire. Uh, and then wheat. Wheat down 31 and a half for the week. Okay, that's not bullish numbers there. Um, the other concerning thing, the dollar screaming higher today with this uh, Greek default uh, talk once again. And that has got the dollar very strong. It's got the euro pretty weak at this point. The dollar right now uh, up about 80 cents, uh, actually 86 cents, and puts that right above that $80 mark. So 80.04. That's still that's pretty good. We've broken out now to the upside on that dollar. If the dollar is going to continue to run, what does that typically do for commodities? That's going to tighten commodities. We could see uh, the funds start to tighten up on positions. Well, that sure wasn't the case today, though. The grains, as I mentioned, we were higher today. Uh, crude oil up 86 cents. So crude now back to 107.50. Uh, crude for the week was up only 72 cents. Uh, but we're back to 107.50. We made a high a couple weeks ago at that 110.55. We're back to 107.50. So uh, we've got to watch that. We've had good support in the crew down near that 105 mark. And uh, we are just chopping around for now. But if the dollar wants to continue to go up, typically we see commodities tighten. Uh, the stock market up about 32 points right now. So as I mentioned, everything seems to be up, including the dollar. Uh, but 32 points higher, finishing out the week pretty strong. Uh, gold and silver, a little higher as well. We know that the metals had taken an absolute bloodbath over the last few weeks. Um, but gold up about 12 bucks today, silver up 44 cents. Um, we've got gold actually higher on the week, up about $2.50. So it's a nice recovery from where we were early in the week. Uh, and silver, though, finishing the week down about 30 cents yet. So still, uh, still a little bit negative there on, on a weekly chart as far as silver. Uh, livestock today, fat cattle down about 65 cents. Hogs were right about unchanged. Um, you had cash cattle trade in Kansas, uh, 124 to 126. Last week we were sitting at 126, 127. So we've seen cash trade a little lower in Kansas. Uh, Nebraska is trading right about steady with last week. Uh, but we've seen this, this negative reaction spill on over into the futures. Uh, April cattle were down $3.70 for the week. So that is a pretty big pullback uh, in the cattle. It's been a while since we've seen that kind of a pullback. Uh, but we're still holding the uptrend as far as cattle. Uh, as far as the hogs, down 262 Most of that cash was trading a little bit lower. Still a concern in the livestock about China slowing down their economy which could lessen, uh, could lessen their demand for pork and beef. 
So that was kind of the concern. Some of the bulls ended up taking some profits this week, but the charts are still friendly as well. So we'll see what that uh, what, what that brings for us for next week. Uh, I want to remind you guys, if you guys have not already uh, participated in our acreage survey, uh, we, we really need your help on that. Um, today is the last day that you can phone it in, but we're going to have this open online. So if you've not done it, go right here on the website. Get this filled out. You can click on that link and put in your information there. Uh, we plan on releasing that stuff uh, ahead of USDA's numbers at the end of the month. So we strongly encourage you guys to do that and get those uh, get those surveys filled out for us. We'd really appreciate it. Um, otherwise, give us a call over here with any questions you might have, 800-262-7538, or check us out right there on the web, allendale-inc.com. Hope you guys had a great week, and we'll talk to you next week. Take care.